Welcome to Access Asia. I'm Yuka Hoye. Coming up in this edition. Vietnam's president resigns after just one year in office in an apparent corruption purge by the country's communist leadership. The turmoil raising questions about political stability in the fast-growing Asian economy. Yet another devastating blow for freedoms in Hong Kong. Criticism mounts as the region's pro-Beijing parliament unanimously passes a new national security law to further crack down on dissent. And Major League Baseball 2024 has kicked off in South Korea. The Los Angeles Dodgers and the San Diego Padres brought Asian-born superstars to Seoul, where the sport has a huge following. Vietnam's president has stepped down in the latest episode of the communist government's sweeping anti-corruption drive. Bo Van Tong is the second president to be forced out of office in two years. Some say what is happening in Vietnam is not just an anti-graft campaign, but also a political purge. Olivia Salazar-Winspear reports. He'd pledged loyalty to the nation just one year ago. I will do anything that is of benefit to the people and avoid anything that is harmful to the people. I'll be determined in the fight against corruption and negative phenomena. And yet Vietnam's president has now stepped down. His resignation accepted by the ruling Communist Party, which said his, quote, violations and shortcomings have dented the party's reputation. The president has a ceremonial function in Vietnam, third in the political hierarchy, with secretary general at the top. Tung stepped into the role after his predecessor quit due to a corruption scandal, one of a raft of politicians and business leaders who've been caught up in a wide-reaching anti-graft campaign. Yet some say this is a deliberate political move to purge certain members of the party and that it comes from the top. Many of his deputies, many of the people uh, who are investigators, uh, who are the executioners of the anti-corruption campaign and other factions within the party, had tried to leverage the anti-corruption goals uh, to root out their own rivals and you know, to compete for you know, political influence with the system. This high-profile political resignation comes as Vietnam's financial and business sectors are also under fire. The director of Saigon's commercial joint stock bank is in the dock this week, accused of embezzling more than $12 billion from the private lender. If she's found guilty, the prosecutor is calling for the death penalty. A few weeks ago, we talked about Hong Kong's new national security bill here on the program with exiled pro-democracy activist Agnes Chow. Now that legislation, called Article 23, has unanimously passed Hong Kong's parliament that's devoid of opposition. It expands on a previous law imposed by Beijing in 2020 and grants more power to the government to quash dissent. Critics have described it as a final nail in a closed coffin. Andrew Hilliard has more. Its backers insist it's necessary for stability, but critics say Article 23 ushers in a new era of repression. Hong Kong's new security law, passed unanimously by lawmakers on Tuesday, grants the government sweeping new powers. They include the ability to charge people for treason, insurrection, espionage and disclosing state secrets. Penalties for serious offences include life imprisonment. The Safeguarding National Security Ordinance will allow Hong Kong to prevent, prohibit and punish espionage activities set up by foreign intelligence units. It will allow Hong Kong to prevent and punish infiltration and sabotage carried out by hostile forces to prevent violence and revolution. Article 23 is the second security law since 2020. Activists, many who fled abroad since then, say the new legislation is just the latest blow to civil liberties on the territory. If we look at four years ago, the implementation of the national security law, after that, there are numerous human rights activists and uh, political opposition that have been jailed. Some of them, they have been jailed for more than three years and still haven't got a verdict. And there have been a uh, 100% conviction rate. The UN has also warned against what it calls the steady erosion of human rights. The broadly defined and vague provisions in the bill under Article 23 of Hong Kong's basic law could lead to the criminalisation of a wide range of conducts protected under international human rights law, including freedom of expression, 
freedom of peaceful assembly, and the right to receive and impart information. The new law caps a dramatic turnaround for Hong Kong. Five years after massive street protests challenged Chinese rule, Beijing's stranglehold on the territory is tighter now than it ever has been. Almost three years since the Taliban ran over the country, Afghanistan remains mired in a humanitarian crisis with millions facing acute food insecurity. Its economy has basically collapsed and people are doing what they can to survive. In the northeast of the country, some men are setting up small mines to try their luck at finding gold, risking their savings and their lives in the process. Verika Vahel brings us the story. Hamayan used to be a mechanic, but with little work, he and other struggling men are trying their luck, digging here in Afghanistan's rocky northeastern mountains. And the goal is to find gold. They told us that the mine was being dug out, and it's our own land, so we've been working here for a month. So far, we have not found an indication that there's gold here. But we have hope. We trust in God. Despite no lucky break yet, they're fueled by hope, as other mines in the area have had some success. Having set up this small-scale mine of four tunnels, the mission has taken investment into fuel, tools and labor to mine the rocks, hoist them down the mountainside and pulverize them into powder that can be sifted for gold. But worries remain that the venture may put them into debt without any reward. Can you see the machine? We put them on a stone and break them apart. Then we mill them like flour, then wash it. If there's anything in it, we collect it. If not, we trust in gods, but we'll be in people's debt. Debt is not the only risk, death is as well with fatal mine collapses common in mineral-rich Afghanistan. Recently, gold prices rose to record levels, though any findings these miners have will see a fifth go to the Taliban. In its third year of drought, Afghanistan is one of the world's poorest nations racked by decades of war. And since the Taliban returned to power in 2021, the UN estimates that around 7 in 10 Afghans are facing food insecurity. And finally, on a lighter note, we're going to take you to South Korea, where it was play ball for the Los Angeles Dodgers and the San Diego Padres in Seoul's Goncheck Skydome. The two teams kicked off a new season for Major League Baseball, winning one each of the two game opening series. France 24's Leo McQueen joins me on set to talk all about the event. Hi, Leo. Well, first of all, why did the MLB, an American uh, sports league, choose to open its regular season in South Korea? Well, something that quite a lot of people don't know is that baseball is absolutely massive in Korea. It's actually the second biggest sport in the country after football. Up to 20% of people put it down as their favourite sport. It was introduced early in the 20th century and then kind of flourished under Japanese occupation. But it wasn't until the 80s where it really took off in 1982. A professional league was established and now there's 8 million spectators every year for that uh, that league. Um, uh, this is a really a new landmark for the country though, the Seoul series. It's the first time regular MLB games have been held in the country. It's not the first time that an MLB season opener has been held abroad. Japan hosted the MLB season opener in 2019 and Mexico City and London host games all the time. It's kind of part of a trend with American sports. We've seen NFL games being hosted regularly in Munich and London and of course we had the NBA International Series in Paris just a few months ago. But for such a baseball loving country, this is really a landmark moment for Korea. Landmark moment Indeed, there must have been a lot of excitement around the event. Now, there's a history of Korean players in uh, playing for the Major League Baseball, isn't there? There certainly is, and it goes back as far as the 1990s. Park Chan-ho was the first man to do it, and it was a nice moment, actually. He threw out the ceremonial pitch in the first of the two games. It was a nice full circle moment. There have actually been 27 Korean MLB players overall, so there's always been a link between the MLB and Korea. One of those players, Hassan Kim, was actually playing for the San Diego Padres in those games, and that's part of the reason the Padres were selected. He was playing in front of an adoring home crowd. And just to put it into context, the roughly 40,000 tickets that went on sale for the event, they went in under an hour. Just goes to show how much of a baseball-loving country that, uh, that Korea is. But a lot of attention was also on another superstar player who was born at just a few hours' flights from Seoul. 
Yeah, very much the biggest name in baseball right now. It's Japanese superstar Shohei Otani. He was playing for the LA Dodgers, actually making his debut after signing what is the biggest contract in sports history. He signed a 10-year, $700 million. Yeah, that's $700 million contract over 10 years. And Showtime was in full flow across the two games. Many fans coming out just to see him in particular. There's actually a bit of a hitch, though. There was a bomb threat called against Otani before the first game. Luckily, that turned out to be a hoax. Uh, Otani wasn't the only Japanese superstar on show, actually. Yoshinobu Yamamoto was also making his debut. He made he signed a huge 300 million deal for uh, the Dodgers in the summer. To, it couldn't have gone much worse for him, actually. He gave up five runs, which is a record worst by a Dodgers pitcher on debut. There is good news for, the fan, for fans in the region, actually, as well, as it looks like they won't have to wait long to get another MLB fix. There's currently talks ongoing, and it looks like Tokyo are going to host the MLB season opener in 2024. Another one in Asia. Well, Leo, thank you for that. And that's all for this episode of Access Asia. Thanks for watching and do stay tuned if you can. There's more world news coming up.